Sitting behind me is the UK's fastest stock engine G80 M3. And in our last video, we turned it up to 1000 bhp. We said we wanted to run a 3.900 to 200, and we've now actually done that. Normally, we'd start to work on the quarter mile and the launch control, 0 to 60, but England's weather just is not allowing that right now. So instead, we're going to take a step back and we're going to do our mapping for 99 and methanol. A lot of you guys like the daily use of meth where you can just have it on and off on a button instead of having to fill up the car with ethanol. So we're going to give the car a quick wash and then we're going to get it up on the dyno. The car is clean, the car is shiny, and now it's allowed up on the dyno. In the last video, I was zooming and eyeing about the backlights. Well, I did change them. I've gone for the same style, but this time blacked out, and I think on a black car, it looks really, really good. But back to the matter at hand and the mapping. So for you guys that missed it in the last episode, this car is now running MHD, and for two main reasons. One, it's got reflex integration, but there's another benefit as well. We have got live mapping. For you guys that don't know what live mapping is, it means that you can make a change whilst the car's still on the dyno and the engine is running. Usually you do a log, you turn the car off, write another file, flash it to the car, turn the car back on and run it again. You only might want to make a tiny little change, maybe one or two ignition, maybe you want to just add in a tiny bit of wastegate. Well, you still got to go through the whole process. Not anymore. So 90% of this car was mapped through windows and a big 43 inch monitor. But for those little changes, I've invested in a little Microsoft Surface Pro laptop. This thing is absolutely tiny and it sits on my lap and I can make changes on the fly. Not only that, we've got live cell tracing. So again, what is that? Well. The car is always referencing from tables that look a little bit like Excel, I guess, and you've got rows and columns. Sometimes it can be really hard to work out exactly what cell is being used at any given time. Not anymore. With the live cell tracing, you can see exactly what row and column is being used and it makes mapping a doddle. Anyway, let's get it strapped down and see what sort of power it's making on 99 at the moment. Dino runs on 99.1 complete, and we're sitting at 775 bhp, which is about 25 brake off of where I'd like to actually be. Wastegate logic is perfect, throttle is perfect, fueling is perfect, and timing is also where I want it. I'm just not asking for enough boost, so we're going to make a little tweak on that, run it back over the dyno, and see if we can actually get this car at 800 bhp just on 99 before we move on to our methanol mapping. With me, I have Winnows. This is on MHD's custom ROM. So having a look here, we've got MHD Plus, and normally you'd have a single value boost limiter. And what they've actually done is they convert it into a 3D table, which means that you've now got boost by gear, boost by RPM, all in one place. So once you've got your load and torque where you want it, you can make real quick, easy changes to the boost, which we're just about to do now. So at five and a half thousand RPM, we're gonna add in one PSI, and at the higher RPM, we are gonna add in 1.5 PSI. So we're not gonna do anything too crazy. Uh, we're just gonna run it up like that. 
see how close we can get to 800. I reckon it ain't going to need a lot of boost to get there. So I'd rather start off with one and a half PSI and see how we get on. We've got the map written on the PC. I've transferred it over to the phone. So I am now connecting to the car. I am going to flash in that map. We're going to run it back up on the dyno. We're going to see how much extra power we're making. Now, I did talk about live mapping, but I'm not quite set up for that yet. I need to get the other PC out. That's what I'm going to use when I'm doing my meth. This should just be a quick change and then I'm ready to go. I wish I had already set it up, but to be honest with you, I thought I was going to make 800 break on the last revision. So here we are. and two bhp 99 run only so let's get some methanol in this car and see if we can find an extra 100 brakes somewhere in previous videos you would have seen me putting race fuel or ethanol in the main tank with the meth it's got its own separate system in the boot the beauty of it is you can turn it on and off so you're driving around on 99 you're not burning through this and then when you want to go fast click of a button on a normal size meth kit you don't even need to map in for it but where we've got a bigger pump, where we've got eight nozzles, the car will actually run rich if we don't make changes for this particular system. So as this boost uh, kicks in, as the methanol kicks in, what we're actually going to do is we're going to pull some fuel in out on the main injector system and let this compensate for it. And the combination of that should keep us on target for our Lamba. Also, this will get an increase in power without making any changes on the ECU, but by having better fuel in, we can push on the ignition further and we're not going to get a drop in fuel pressure, meaning we can also run more boost if we wish. And that's how we're going to find that extra 100 brake. Back over to the big PC now and we're going to start on our meth mapping. So we're actually going to use map one and copy it into map slot two, but then we're going to make a couple of changes to it. We're going to increase the boost slightly. We're going to give it a little bit more ignition. We're going to keep the fuel target where it is. We would have the ability to go leaner if we wanted to, but there's no point. We'd rather keep it safe. But the fuel scaler and the amount of fuel being injected on the DI system, the original system, we're going to turn it down a little bit because obviously we're going to be getting a ton more fuel coming in from that meth system. We'll get that up on the dyno, see what sort of power we make. The changes that I'm making are going to be quite small at first because I'd rather undershoot than overshoot. The car is filled up with meth. We've written our methanol map and we've flashed it onto the car. So map slot one is going to make 800 brake all the way up to 1,000 brake using 99 or ethanol or a combination of both. Map slot two, which we're now on, is gonna be reserved just for 99 plus meth. So our first revision is written. We're gonna turn it on inside the car and we're gonna see what sort of power we're making. So we're set up to do our first run on the methanol. And if we come and have a look in the car, you'll see what kit we've got set up to do this. If I flick the screen around, we've got a dyno computer up there. We've got our dongle plugged in just down here. We can data log off the phone, but we're also connected to the car here. So this is where it gets interesting. If we have a look, you can actually see what ignition cells are being used right now. And if I give that a rev, see that moving? So not only can we see exactly where the cells are being used in the real time, when we want to make a change, we don't have to go back over to the big desktop PC no more. We can make it on that little one and inject it straight into the DME, meaning there's no reason for me to jump out of this car until the tuning is complete. Last bit to change, we have a look here. We've got our MEF controller. We turn it on and we're now ready to roll. First dyno run done with the methanol, and we are now sitting at 887 bhp, so we're pretty close to our goal. I'm just data logging it at the moment, and I can see the fueling on this laptop as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it one more run, see how far away from our goal we are, and if need be, we're going to lean on it a little bit harder, because I'd rather make sure that I'm fully in there. But before we do this, 
Just gonna go over to the log that I've done. So all data is saved on the phone there and I can go through and check everything literally as it's happening. So timing corrections, got hardly anything happening there. That's looking nice and clean. What have we got here? So we get a little overboost condition right up at the top. So I may need to bring down the compressor table on map two just to account for that. That's something I had to do on the flex fuel map as well. So the flex fuel map where we're running a lot more boost, we've had to actually pull the wastegate down where we're on a hybrid turbo. Now I'm running a bit more boost on map two. I'm starting to see the same sort of thing happening again. And if we have a look at our boost and our boost target, Let's see if we're actually where we want to be. Yeah, we are where we want to be. So we've got a little bit of headroom there. Let's get another run in and let's see. I could end up giving this like a, another PSI. Um, I'd rather lean on it on the boost side than the ignition side. Uh, for you guys that don't know much about tuning, boost uh, relies more heavily on the turbos because that's what's generating the pressure and ignition is going to rely on the fueling more. I do have the meth there, but Seeing as I've got hybrid turbos and they're not working hard at all, I'd rather lean on that side of the car. So, we're now running through the gears. We're gonna start the data log on the phone. The laptop is already recording. And let's see where we end up. Apologies guys, the uh, gimbal fell over. Um, we've actually hit what we need to there, so I may end up doing some tidying up on the wastegate, but uh, it looks like the car was still adapting. So we'll check the log in a second, but uh, yeah, we just ran 9.12 there, so I don't need to lean on the car anymore. I'm happy with that. What I do also need to check is it it's not just about numbers, it's about making sure that the car is uh, still running relatively safe as well. So you could be making the power that you want, but you could be running really lean. You could be having your high pressure fuel pumps crashing. You could be pulling out a ton of ignition. You could be over boosting and you're actually only sitting at 30% throttle. So there's tons and tons of things that could be going on in the log that we also need to account for. But if we have a little look here. So we do know that some wastegate needed to be pulled out on the first run. Did that happen on the second one? Yeah, it did. So although we're making the power that we want to make, we are still going to make some tweaks here just so that the PID system is not actually intervening and correcting everything for us. There we go. So we have now made a change over to the compressor table. Probably have to speed that up a little bit, but it is what it is. And we should have a button to write that straight into the DMA. Right, that's our compressor table uh, set up. So, Let's get this on one more dyno run. Come on. I was ready for it to drop this time. I'm not dropping the Osmo twice. Okay, so we lost two wheel horsepower. Uh, so, Pretty much the same again. Uh, but more importantly, let's check the log. So yeah, that's perfect. Right, so that is a quick walkthrough of MHD using their uh, live mapping features. It's amazing, really. It saves a hell of a lot of time. And it also helps with understanding the logic of the ECUs. So it makes my job a lot quicker, a lot easier, and helps me provide you guys with better tunes. They know we're out here. They've just heard about the 900 break. <laughs> so that is the video done for today. We've got our 900 BHP. That was what we set out to do. We've managed to achieve it. That's 900 brake with 99 and meth. As you guys know, we make a thousand brake when using the E85 system, but this is much better for daily use because you can click it on and off with a button. It's really nice to show you guys the process involved in tuning one of these cars as well. You now got a bit of a glimpse of Winholes, Tuner Pro, how the cars are data logged, and what's going through the mind when you're trying to increase power and what we're looking out for. 
If this video has interested you, have a look through my older ones because I've literally been filming this car since it was stock. And if you're interested in getting some tuning done by me, have a look on the website or give us a call and I'll do my best to get a package that's right for you. For now, like and subscribe and look out for my next video.